What's up, everybody? Happy New Year! Happy New Year to you, fellas. It's such a great pleasure. Thank you very much. Play some happy new music. Happy New Year! <laughs> this is crazy. Thank you very much for being part of this. I appreciate you. I know you've had a good time. You've had time to relax, I hope. Uh, you, you have done just that. And I wish you all the best. I wish you prosperity, fairness. Yeah, make some money this year, okay? Uh, good things. Get married. You know, get married. Stop making that woman wait too long. And ladies, please get married, okay? Get married. Make some children. Be happy. Build houses. Get businesses. I wish you all the best. And I appreciate you, you know? This is our space. I appreciate you so much. Thank you very much. I salute you from all the place. I know you're watching us from South Africa, from Kenya. You can just, it was in Kenya, fellas. It was in Kenya. Most amazing place ever. Um, absolutely insane. Actually, we had a little documentary that I did. We're going to have it uploaded uh, in the next couple of days. Great experience. Went to Kenya for New Year's Eve. It was amazing. We was at a place called Oysters. Oysters Bar. Oysters. <laughs> insane. very much fellas i hope all is good today we're talking about north korea again you know this is our space where we talk about a lot of things we talk about family we talk about our people and see how we progress so we're going to talk about north korea today don't be scared you're certainly going to find something that makes sense for you or to you as an african person or african descent person okay let's go so north korea has announced the launch of a new spy satellite yeah north korean leader Kim jong-un pledged to launch three military spy satellites, build attack drones, and expand the country's nuclear material in 2024, according to media reports. So North Korea is not playing. I think we spoke about North Korea the last time, and we explained to you that North Korea launched um, uh, a satellite, spy satellite, and they were taunting America, saying that they have files and pictures of the White House. You remember that? We all know how they proceeded. North Korea for many, many years have tried to launch anything like that and ballistic missiles. Uh, they were not able to do it because uh, they did not have the technology. But very recently, the North Korean president went to Russia to meet with the Russian president and they decided to agree on something that was not disclosed. But a few weeks later, North Korea has attempted many times. In fact, they had attempted many times to launch a satellite. They were unable to do so. They were failing every time. But after the trip to Russia, after discussing with the Russian president, when he came back two weeks later, they launched a satellite on orbit. Obviously, Russia helped North Korea achieve this because they've been trying for many years, could not achieve it. And the lesson, I believe, in that instance was very simple. When you are a strong person and you have issues with everybody, you have issue with Mr. A, you have issue with John, issue with Jack, Issue with Kunde, issue with Manifa, you have issues with everybody. What happens finally, you know, people come together against you. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened with North Korea and Russia with regard to the United States. Because both countries have been pushed to the side, have been sanctioned. They have come together to help each other. Russia was looking for ammunition to go fight in Ukraine. Because, you know, they've been spending a lot of ammunition fighting Ukrainians. So they needed to fill up. They cooperated with North Korea. North Korea brought more ammunition to Russia. Why? Because they have same techniques, same materials, same logistics, same communist logistics. So it was very easy to transfer AK-47 ammunition and all that type of stuff that Russians really need for their war against Ukraine. And in the same token, uh, North Korea negotiated to get the technology to launch a satellite on orbit. Now they have satellites that can surveil the U.S., and the United States doesn't like it very much. They say they're violating the right of international rights. Violating the... <laughs> crazy stuff. So in remarks made at the end of the meeting on the weekend, King raised against the vicious move of the United States and its followers. So United States and its followers. So you consider other countries like the followers of America. They have no nothing to say. They just follow what America says. And it says they're working against North Korea, claiming the U.S. has helped push the Korean Peninsula in the bricks of a nuclear war. He says because of the United States, the Korean Peninsula has been in the brinks of a war. And because of the reckless move by the enemy to invade us, it is fait accompli 
that a war can break out at any time. So let's be prepared. Kim also used his remarks to further dig into South Korea, calling the country a hemiplegic malformation. <laughs> An hemiplegic malformation is calling the South Korea. Hemiplegic means, uh, you know, somebody that cannot move one side of the body or handicapped by an injury or a disease. He says South Korea is an hemiplegic malformation and a colonial subordinate state with society tainted by Yankee culture. Again, fellas, to give you context, uh, North Korea and South Korea used to be one country. Okay, many years ago, before the end of World War II, they were one country. But the northern part was occupied by the communists and the southern part was occupied by the Western nations, such as America and everybody else. The northern parts became very much like a communist country. They kept very strong values, strong men, you know, strong attitudes, very rigged, you know, <clears throat> men in connection with the earth and stuff like that. The southern part of Korea became very much like Western nations where they accepted tattoos, you know, women loving other women, men and other men. They, yeah. So in the meantime, they have cousins, okay? People of the North have cousins in the South. They speak the same language. People of the South have nieces and aunties in the North, but they're separated today because of politics. And also North Korea has been very strong in terms of its culture. They don't want their culture tainted by Yankees' culture, like he says. He feels like they should be left alone into pursuing their own destiny. They don't want you to come into the country to bring in McDonald's. They're not interested in that. They have no level of obesity in North Korea. They are no obese people because according to them, they eat good food. They don't eat genetically modified stuff like most of us eat today. He further ordered the military to prepare to pacify the entire territory of South Korea, including through the use of nuclear bombs if needed in response to attacks. So he tells his people to be ready. Let me just remind you here, fellas. North Korea is the biggest army, one of the biggest armies certainly in the world because everybody in North Korea is a military, is a soldier. Every adult is a soldier. Okay, Whether you work as a doctor, you're also a soldier. Whether you work as a nurse, you're also a soldier. So they've been investing for many, many years to protect themselves from the enemy. The enemy is Western nation to them. Okay, They don't want to be influenced with anything that's not belong to them. So they've been prepared to protect themselves. Now, there are many countries that have been sanctioned in the past. Many countries that have been sanctioned, but also have been attacked, like Iraq, sanctioned and attacked. Syria, sanctioned and attacked. Uh, many other countries. Now, the question is, why have they never attacked North Korea? Why have they never attempted to go and bring democracy in that country? Why? For one reason. Because North Korea is armed and ready. Because they've always been prepared. They've been trying to shoot missiles all over uh, the, the sea, all over Japan. And very recently, North Korea acquired the technology that can shoot a missile all over to the United States from North Korea. So they know they cannot just go there and park their boat and start bombing them. They can't do that. They cannot go do in North Korea what's been done in Palestine. They cannot do that. They will not do in North Korea what they did in Iraq. Why? Because North Korea is ready. And again, fellas... I think it's necessary to remind people that one of the main reasons somebody can ever be respected is because he's feared. You know, respect is nice. I firmly believe fear is better. People truly really respect something they can fear somewhere. That's the nature of humans. And I'm talking about somebody who doesn't know you. He will truly respect you. I'm not talking about family members. I'm talking about somebody from afar. Somebody from afar can truly respect you if he doesn't know what you're capable of. Or if he knows you are capable of harm, that's when they respect you. A troublemaker, a bandit, a criminal person cannot respect you if he knows you are harmless. Absolutely not. It's not possible for a troublemaker, a hacker, a criminal to respect you is generally because he knows you're armed. So North Korea has said, we are not going to wait for you to come and come and pacify us and bring us democracy like they do most of the time in different countries. If you come in our country with that mentality, you're going to meet fire and hell. So they've been building the military, building the stronghold. They don't beg for anything. They've been cut out the world economy. They cannot trade with anybody besides a few countries like China and Russia now. But they have survived. They've kept their authenticity because they refuse to let in 
any of the businesses from Europe and America. So you can only be respected by these countries if you have an army that's strong. But my question is, why don't Africans do the same? In order for you to be strong at the table of negotiation, you need to be able to cause harm. That's the truth. I don't care how you want to take it. I, I understand you like going to church. You want a peaceful, nice world. But that's not the reality of the world. We're living in it. The world we're living in is vicious. People are not nice. People only respect people are capable of harm. That's the truth. People only avoid messing up or messing around somebody they know is dangerous or somebody they don't quite know what he's capable of. And it's very sad to see many African countries today, like I said the other day, they will invest a lot of money into pageant, you know, competition, Miss, like they call it, Miss competition. Who's Miss South Africa? Miss Congo, Miss Uganda, whatever. These girls get a lot of money. They can get up to $100,000, you know, $100,000, but just winning that pageant competition. Stupid. In the meantime, there are some youngsters that have ideas that are, engineers that are constructors, some genius young men that can create tangible things, create new technology. They don't f finance them. These people do not get any financing. They don't get any sponsorships or anything to help them build a, you know, build, build something, create something, protection for the country, create weaponry. Africa has a lot of people that are very intelligent, but these people are overlooked. There used to be a young man from uh, Zimbabwe. I don't know where he went. This boy created a TV with no need for electricity. The TV functioned with no electricity. Uh, this is our self-powered TV that we have uh, designed. The first in the world to have such kind of a technology where a television is powered with a radio frequency. So as you can see right now, I'm powering this television. Uh, so this is the first uh, television in the world that uses self power to say. It is all in one. You don't need to put it on electricity or on solar panel or anything. He created uh, access to internet without having a SIM card, without having connection to any service provider. I don't know where he is now. Is he still alive? There's a guy from Zimbabwe who created a TV with no, no need to plug it to electricity. People like that, why are they not sponsored by African government? Why don't they support? There was another one in Cote d'Ivoire who also created something really, really extraordinary. I saw on the internet another kid from Kenya who created a robot or whatever he created could facilitate, could speak out what the person is thinking. Why aren't these inventors being sponsored? How do you think these countries move forward? Because they invest into the right things. But African nations are ready to invest into pageant. Young girls shaking their butt, they invest. Music, concert, they'll put a lot of money into it. Things that are absolutely stupid in order to be respected as a country or as a continent, first of all, you need to have a strong army, a united army. Number two, you need to have the technology, an updated technology where you can do your own things. Africans use cell phones that are brought in from Europe and America. Then you wonder how they hack you. They can hear everything you're saying. It's not your cell phone, of course. It's not yours. You didn't create it. They can sell you a machine and put something inside that could send all the information to them. It's not yours. When you order computers for government from another country, what do you expect? Do you think they're going to give you just normal computers? No, these computers will be rigged, you know, planted into, f they're going to put stuff in it. The continent cannot just be a continent of consumers, just consuming, eating, eating, eating. You can't even create lighters, allumettes. You can't even create papier hygienique, uh, toilet paper. It must come from other countries. In the meantime, you see these big government people driving big cars, owning big houses zero investment into technology. And as long as Africans will stay like that, will not build their own weapons, as long as they will not build their own planes, as long as Africans will not have the technology to protect themselves from cyber criminality and cyber attacks, we will always be beggars. We will always be that person that's not strong enough, that's always colonized. Thank you very much, fellas. Let me know how you feel about this. Always a great pleasure. North Korea is going to send a satellite, more spy satellite in, to the space. America said this is violating international laws. So violating international laws is when North Korea acquired the technology that you have. That is crazy. So you can have all the satellites in the world to spy on other body, 
you know, to take pictures of wars, take pictures of Russia, pictures of Ukraine, pictures of North Korea, but they cannot do that to you because it's violating international. That's that's weird. And the North Korean president says he's going to be ready to discuss with Donald Trump. If Donald Trump becomes president again, maybe he's going to have a talk with America. But in the meantime, he's not interested. Let me just remind you here that Donald Trump, I don't care what you say about him, was the only president, okay, the only president on modern time to cross into North Korea from the south. He met King Jomo and they were in the verge of finding something together. But right now, it's not the same. Let me know how you feel about this. Always a great pleasure. God bless.